actually heard of Shonan, or used Shonan. Great, that's perfect. Um, the reason I started putting this pr uh, presentation together is uh, a Killian, who's actually developed this. Um, I talked to him a little bit a couple months ago, and he, he was looking at the queries that people were putting into Shodan, and he was pretty much convinced that people didn't know what they were really looking for. So I, I imagine that a lot of you guys will probably know some of the stuff that's already in here, but uh, just kind of an idea of, of, of some of the uh, capabilities you can use with Shodan. Um, there's a lot more that you can do beyond this, but obviously I have 15 minutes and 59 slides, so I'm going to fly through as much as I can. So this is what I'm going to talk about. What is it? Uh, basic operations. Um, I have two case studies I'm going to show on uh, Cisco devices and then on default passwords, and then I'll talk about uh, some other issues. So it's a computer search engine. Uh, Achillian is the guy who developed it. I actually talked to him about this. So I said, hey, do you mind if I present on, this, on your tool? And he's like, no, go ahead. So that's really cool of him to do that. So it's a search engine, but it's not like Google or Yahoo or Bing. It's, this is a, search, a, a typical search engine looks for data on a website that indexes it, where, whereas Shodan is a search engine for metadata about a computer. So it's basically a search engine of banners. So it's banner grabbing large swaths of the internet, and that's what you're able to search on. So uh, to know what you're looking for, you really have to know what a banner looks like or what you're looking for in a banner. So having some basic knowledge of what a banner looks like will really help you refine what you're looking for. This is what it looks like. A little difficult to see. Uh, it's just a regular uh, search uh, input. I'll talk about some of the filters that you can use. Uh, initially, there was no login. Now, you don't have to log in, but you can log in with like your Google account or uh, OpenID or some other accounts like that. Gives you some additional functionality, which I'll also talk about. There's also two, uh, two uh, Firefox add-ons. One gives you uh, just like a, opens up a sidebar for you to enter eight queries, and then there's also a drop-down uh, search provider add-on that you can use for the for Shodan. So just enter it into a text box. Uh, you can use quotes like a regular bool uh, to uh, if you want a specific term, and then uh, plus and minus for Boolean operators. Plus is actually uh, is uh, implicit, uh, but if you want to exclude a certain term, obviously just use the minus in front of it. So just like just like pretty much any other search engine. So you can be very general. You want to search for Apache. It's going to find pretty much any device that has Apache in the banner, which is going to be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of boxes. Uh, or you can search for maybe a specific version of a device. Now you can kind of think of where this is getting into, searching for maybe devices that are older, out of date, for example. You can also filter by a number of options. That would be a two-letter country code. So if you're looking for devices in a certain country, uh, if you're looking for, you can also uh, filter by IP or CIDR. So if you have a, a specific range that you're looking at, and then uh, host name and also port. Currently uh, 21, 22, 23, and 80, but uh, he's, ta he's talking about doing some additional ports in the future. So if you want, for example, all Apache servers in Switzerland, so or Apache country uh, colon ch, so whatever the uh, two-letter country code is for whatever country you're looking for. Um, Apache server is running 2.2.3, so just Apache 2.2.3. Um, one of the things if you don't include a country is the top four results for by country will be displayed at the top of the page. Uh, in this result, United States 322,000, Germany 53,000, etc. So it kind of gives you an idea of, of what's available. This is not the whole internet, but there is large portions of the internet that he's uh, already searched. Now, there's also a drop-down box for the country filters. You can actually um, uh, mouse over a country, and it'll tell you how many uh, servers in that country have been surveyed by the uh, box. IP and uh, IP uh, cider filtering and country filtering require you to be signed in. So that, that is an important uh, a net filter uh, is, is the IP cider, so just net, colon, and then uh, whatever cider, uh, if you're looking for a specific one. There's an OS filter if you want to search for certain uh, operating systems. So if you want all Apache servers in the .nist.gov domain, or if you want IS 5.0 servers in the EDU domain, just a couple of brief examples. Uh, you can filter by port, which I already talked about. Just a few very brief things about a showdown. And these are some just rhetorical questions. Um, viewing configuration of a device on the internet that you don't own but doesn't require any authentication to log into. Well, you're just viewing it. 
Uh, what about viewing the configuration of a device using a default username and password? What about a unique password? What about changing the configuration of any of these devices? I don't know the answers. This is kind of where I put them on the black to white scale. That's kind of viewing a page with no authentication, using a default username and password, using, you know, using a unique password, and then maybe changing the configuration of a device that you don't own. Just threw that little bit of ethics at you there. <laughs> so, just a very quick review of HTTP status codes that we'll be looking at. 200 OK just means request succeeded. 401 unauthorized and 403 forbidden. The difference, of course, between 401 and 403 is 401 is saying, I'm not going to show you this page, but if you provide the pr proper uh, author authorization, you can see it, whereas 403 is basically saying no. Um, so here's the assumptions. If you see a 200 OK, we're going to be able to look at the page with no authentication at all. If you see a 401 and a www authenticate line, it's going to pro require a username and password. And this is probably going to be a pop-up box asking for a username and password. Um, also, some banners advertise defaults, defaults username, default usernames and passwords, so we can use that. So here's a typical 401 unauthorized banner. I know you may not be able to see this, but the top line is just the 401 unauthorized, and then the third line is the www.authenticate. If you went to this IP address, you get a pop-up box, and it would be asking for a username and password. So, uh, yeah, it's a Cisco device, some Cisco device. It doesn't, you don't necessarily know what it is, but you see the server line says Cisco IOS. So here's a 200 OK for a Cisco device, and notice uh, that it also has a, there's, notice there's no www authenticate line, but there's a last modified line. So here's the two side by side. One has a www authenticate line, which requires us to put in a username and password, and one is a 200 OK, which is allowing us to view the page and doesn't require a password. Um, in fact, if you searched on Shodan for Cisco IOS with these two lines, you would find that these, these are almost 99, almost 100 percent mutually exclusive. In other words, if it's got last modified in it, chances are it doesn't require any authentication at all. So here's our search results. If you just search for Cisco, 147,000 devices. Cisco IOS, 144,000. Uh, www authenticate, 140,000. Last modified. 3100, last modified, and WW Authenticate 6. So what does this tell us? There's probably about 3,000 Cisco devices that Cisco, that, that uh, Shodan has already um, looked at that don't require any authentication at all. So what do these things look like? Well, you've, if you guys, have, this is the old Cisco web interface, where the uh, HTML interface, where the numbers give you a, a level. So surely, you know, it's not going to let me click on level 15 and give me level 15 access to the device, or maybe it will. <laughs> That's my round. Um, so surely, it, well, maybe it won't let me do execute commit. Yeah, it will. <laughs> um, show running, conf yeah. Show CDP neighbors, yeah. By the way, uh, I know you can't see this, but this is CN-CNC, so that's like China Netcom. We're talking like infrastructure routers here, or switches. You know, they're not all switch switches or routers, but they're you know big Cisco devices. This is a Cisco Net Aeronet access point. Uh, this is the main page, the setup page, the security page, the network interface page, the sec and up more security. All all of which have, requires no authentication, so we can pretty much change anything we want. This is a, a Cisco Catalyst 2960 Series Device Manager switch configuration. This is the dashboard. Here's the, the ports. Want to turn off a port? So, and, and it's great how people sometimes very accurately label their switches for different floors of a building or the address of the building. And wow, I mean, thank you. Network management, etc. Here's the Cisco SDM Express for another device. Oh, there's no password set on it. Do you want to set a password? Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm just, I, I got 59 slides here. Okay, so 
just trying to show you that there's a small percentage, but 3,000 Cisco devices out there that require no authentication at all. Now, are some of them going to be useless devices? Of course, they're probably old. But we already saw one big infrastructure device for China Netcom, and there's a lot more out there. So as a penetration tester, obviously, if you're looking for a specific device in a specific domain, maybe you'll find something out there. Maybe not, but I mean, instead of you know, grabbing all these banners yourself, they've already been done by somebody, so why not use it? Second case study is, is default passwords. So this is a very simple search, just using default password. So we're looking for banners that have the word default password in it with the, with the probability of that the banner was actually going to say what the default password is. That doesn't necessarily mean that the device is using the default password, but maybe they are. So we're talking about the lowest hanging fruit. So here's, a, here's an example of a device. This is actually the first one I found. Default password, 1234. It's a print, ser print server for a printer. Uh, and it, it does have the WW Authenticate, so it's going to give us a pop-up box, probably. So it doesn't give a username, but let's, you know, what are the first usernames you're going to try? Admin or a null username? So it doesn't work. Here's the box is exactly what I expected. And, oh, yeah, the null username worked and the default password worked. So I know some of these characters, this is probably another Chinese box where the, uh, the, the, set, the uh, characters didn't translate. But um, pretty much if you, go th if you would go through all these settings, you could pretty much configure anything you wanted on this. So there are lots of more devices like this that are using the default passwords that you could pretty much do whatever you want with. By the way, the reason I didn't blur any of these IP addresses are because you could just do it right now and you'd still find the same stuff out there, and I don't feel like I'm doing anything wrong by doing it. Maybe I am, but whatever. Okay, so IAS 5.0. We know there's lots of IAS 5.0 boxes out there. I mean, 280,000 according to Shonan. I'm sure there's a lot more, but this is what they found. IAS, well... Nobody's using IS 4.0 anymore, right? I mean, there's no way. 7,500. What about 3.0? No, it's not possible. Come on. Yeah, 331. IS 2.0, 36. Does anybody know what IS 1.0 maps to? Windows NT 3.91, which came out in 1995. 136. <laughs> no. Maybe, maybe the target that you're searching for isn't one running one of these. I mean, the chances would be low, but they're out there. <laughs> now, you've all seen Google, Google uh, hacking devices that will find you webcams, and, and again, this does it too. And there, there's an interesting um, view of this slide. I want to show you this slide and then this slide, then this slide. The difference is this one is viewed in Firefox, and there, the translation of those lines is jo uh, snapshots, so taking snapshots from the webcam, and then client.html. Strangely enough, when viewed in IE, there's a third line. And that is config.html. By the way, this camera also pans and tilts and does all of the fun stuff. I was, I was going back and forth like, please look at the camera. And then, you know. okay. okay, so I don't know Chinese, but Google does. And that's what all those things are pretty much do anything I want with the camera. And I also found some Ethernet, other devices. I don't, I mean, you can pretty much find whatever you want if you know what to look for in the banners. And that's really the key point about Shodan. Uh, a couple minutes left. Uh, John said he's working on an API. Uh, he did disable IP cider filtering for a little bit because he, want, he didn't want people just enumerating, you know, and he also, uh, when you do a search, you're going to be limited to the first five pages, which is 100 results, because he just doesn't want people enumerating his whole entire list. However, if you think about it, there's a lot of good filters here that you don't really need to, if you filter down to what you really want, you can find uh, a lot more stuff. Question? Would you 
is he doing the searching himself, or is he using another search? I believe he's doing the searching himself. I believe he's doing the searching himself. No. There was actually, uh, uh, many of you guys know Richard Belchich, a uh, respected, uh, res very respected guy who came out right after this came out and said, this is going to be shut down within like a, a couple days. And, you know, I, while I totally respect his opinion, I was like, I don't think so. I said, you want to take a, let's pick an over-under date and let's, let's make a bet on it, which he didn't reply to. But, I mean, is he doing anything here that you can't do by, is he pushing the line? Yeah, but. I think this is pretty awesome. <laughs> so, what's, well, I mean, I don't know. Here's, the, here's my conclusion. Yeah, could you do this all yourself? Absolutely. He's at, what he's done with Shodan is he's aggregating information that isn't already widely available in an easy format for you to find, of course. Secondly, it allows some level of passive vulnerability analysis on your part, so you can maybe identify vulnerabilities based on versions, based on software that people are running without actually going to the target website. Honestly, I think this is this is pretty game changing in terms of penetration testing. Is everything going to go this way? Of course not. But I think that future vulnerability assessments will include this sort of uh, information. I mean, if you're not, if you're doing a certain part portion of the internet it's, or a large enterprise network that has a large internet facing portion and you're not using something like this, then I think you're, you, you may be missing out on something. And that's all I got. Question. Is there a way to differentiate between um, Shodan has an enumerated in the cider net versus if you find anything that didn't enumerate um, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Any other questions? I will be hanging out for the rest of the talk, so if you have any additional questions. Thank you guys a lot. I appreciate it.